the story begins with a man named Nor. We see him cleaning out a drain, and after finishing, he returns to his construction job, where he is the most hardworking person of them all. The manager thanks him for his huge help, noting that, thanks to him, they are on schedule. He suddenly hears something calling for help and goes to investigate, only to find a group of soldiers fighting a huge cow point. Fifteen years earlier, Nor is living with his sick mother. He makes a medicinal tea for her and, as he goes to feed the goats, she makes him promise not to go beyond the rock and begins to cough. He rushes to boil some water, but she stops him and starts cleaning his face. She apologizes for not being able to do anything to help him and tells him to live however he likes because she doesn't want to be a burden. That night, as he is preparing soup, he goes to feed his mother but is shocked to find she has already passed away. The next day, he buries her beside his father's grave, dries his tears, and returns to his working routine. Despite his sadness at eating dinner alone, he finds a book at the house and remembers his father speaking of an adventurer who fought evil for the sake of his friends. This makes him reflect on his mother's advice to always follow his dreams. The next morning, Nor feeds the animals, prepares himself, and says goodbye to his parents' graves before setting off on his journey. Upon arriving in a huge city, he is amazed by the crowd and excited to see an adventurer walking past him. He goes to the guild, but the guild owner tells him that the place isn't for someone like him. Nor mentions that the guards at the gate said he could become an adventurer if he came there. The owner warns him that he will make his parents worry, but Nor tells him they're both dead. Feeling sympathy for him, the owner instructs him to get lessons at the royal training school, explaining that he will need to acquire a skill to become an adventurer. Nor goes to the school hoping to become a swordsman, but after a few months, his teacher tells him to stop, believing Nor lacks what it takes to achieve his goal. The teacher suggests that continuing would be a waste of time and advises him to choose another path. Nor then goes to the warrior school, but after a few more months, his instructor tells him that only his physical appearance has improved, and if he keeps pushing himself, he risks losing his life. He then tries all the other schools, but each one gives him the same answer. The guild owner is shocked that Nor hasn't acquired a decent skill and informs him that he cannot register as an adventurer in his current state, rather than sinking into depression, Nor promises to work even harder to achieve his goal. He prepares a wooden sword to practice and recalls his instructor's advice that if he repeatedly practices one skill, he might master it. He decides to become a master at parrying. One year later, he can evade ten swords in one breath, and although he hasn't gained any new skills, he is still improving. Three years later, he can parry one hundred swords, but he is disappointed to find that he still hasn't gained a new skill, making his dream of becoming an adventurer seem out of reach. Ten years later, he can parry one thousand thousand swords in one swing but still hasn't acquired any new skills, the next day, he visits his parents' graves and says he will try one more time. He goes to the adventurer's guild and recounts all his skills, but the receptionist suggests he take lessons at the training school first. She is shocked when he mentions that he has been to all of them and tells him he can't be registered. As he prepares to leave, the guild master arrives and recognizes him. Nor tells him that despite his continuous training, the only skill he has improved is his parrying skill. The guild master explains that adventurers have different ranks, with S rank being the highest and E rank the lowest. To be recognized as an E rank, one needs more than one useful skill, which Nor lacks. However, the guild master informs him that there is also an F rank, which is virtually unheard of, even among those involved. Nor gets excited and asks if he can register. The guild master explains that F rank adventurers are forbidden from taking on any combat quests or leaving the city to gather items. They can only accept miscellaneous jobs around the city. Although Nor thinks no one would become a hunter just for such tasks, he still wants to register he receives his license his eyes sparkling with excitement as it has always been his dream to become an adventurer. He starts taking on city tasks and continues to train his parrying skill at night. Nor looks at his license and reflects on how his dream of becoming an adventurer and helping people has finally come true, feeling content with what he has achieved in the present. Nor is surprised to see a massive cow, something he had only ever seen in books. The soldiers are trying to protect a girl, but the minotaur charges at them, slamming one into a wall. The remaining soldiers attempt to fight back, but with a single swing of its axe, the creature kills them all. As it prepares to attack the girl, Nor throws a rock at it to divert its attention, the Minotaur starts rushing at him, and as it attacks with its horns, Nor parries the attack and pushes it into a wall. The Minotaur gets back up and attacks him with its axe, but Nor manages to block the attacks with his parry skill. Nor looks for an opening but realizes that even if he finds one, he lacks offensive abilities. The Minotaur turns its attention to the girl and rushes to attack her with the axe. Nor manages to save her, but his sword shatters into pieces. At that moment, he remembers his father's words to always protect the weak from evil. This conviction makes him an adventurer. The Minotaur attacks again, but Nor parries the blow with his broken sword, causing the axe to fly away and ultimately cutting off the Minotaur's head. The girl introduces herself as Lin and thanks Nor for saving her life. When she asks his name, he immediately leaves, stating that he is no one important to know. As he walks around the city, he reflects on how he almost died fighting a cow that wasn't even a demon and vows to work even harder than before. Later, 
A girl named Ines approaches Lin and apologizes for not being with her. Lin tells her that she is not at fault, as she was the one who insisted that Ines not come with her. A man named Darkin interrupts them, saying they need to return to the castle because Lord Rain wants to speak with Lin. After their conversation, Rain asks Darkin if it's true that a Minotaur was in the city, as Minotaurs are supposed to be demons of the abyss, found only in the deepest parts of dungeons. Darkin confirms this, and Rain suspects it was summoned by someone. He notes that they found a ring on the body of a merchant, believed to be the source of the summon. Upon investigation, they discovered that the ring is of high purity, not found on the market. Rain points out that minotaurs are A-level demons, so even wealthy individuals can't easily acquire items to capture them. Darkin then mentions that the crest on the ring is from the magic empire of Darius. The leader of Darius has always been opposed to them, and they are surprised that he isn't even trying to hide his intentions. They believe that, in addition to attempting to assassinate Lin, his main goal was to provoke them into starting a war. Rain speculates that he must be after the relics from the Dungeons of the Lost, which are a valuable resource for their kingdom. Rain reads the report on Nor and sees that he defeated the Minotaur but disappeared when they tried to follow him. Meanwhile, Nor goes to the guild, and the guild master is relieved that he is still alive. Nor is confused about what is going on. The owner mentions that last night a demon appeared near the entrance of the dungeon, close to the construction site, and since they didn't see Nor's face after work, they were worried something might have happened to him. The owner asks why Nor's face is dirty, and he explains it's because he cleaned mud from the drain before arriving. The owner tells him he is lucky not to have run into the demon, as he used to be an A-rank hunter and would have died immediately if he had faced it. Nor, on the other hand, is just glad he only had to face a cow. He asks what happened to the demon, and the master explains that it was defeated by a man with just one blow, which surprises Nor. After paying him for his work, the master advises him to find a decent job so the guild doesn't have to take 30% of his earnings. Lin suddenly appears behind Nor, mentioning that she found him using her long-distance detection skill. This makes Nor think her class might be a thief, but she clarifies that she's a magician with knowledge of all six skill systems. Noticing that everyone in the guild is watching them, she suggests they talk outside. Before they leave, the guild master pulls Nor aside to ask if he did something wrong, but Nor reassures him that he hasn't done anything to get him in trouble. Outside, Lin uses soundproofing and concealment skills so no one can hear their conversation. Curious, Nor wonders what she wants to discuss. Lin thanks him for saving her life, explaining that his actions not only helped her but also saved countless lives across the nation. He acknowledges her impressive skills and thinks he only interrupted the fight, but she tells him that if he hadn't intervened, she would already be dead. She offers to reward him, but he mentions that her gratitude is more than enough. She tells him that her father wants to meet him. As a person of status, she wants to at least give something to the person who saved her life. Despite her offers, Nor repeatedly declines, claiming her thanks is sufficient. Lin then starts crying and insists that until he accepts her gratitude, she will not move from there. This makes Nor remember his past, so he agrees to meet her father when they reach their house. Nor is surprised by its size. As they walk inside, Lin asks for his name. They see Ines and ask her to escort them to her father. Nor thinks Ines might be some kind of maid in their house, but she seems wary of him. Inside the mansion, they run into a man named Gilbert, who acts tough and starts asking questions about Nor. Ines tells him to back off, stating that Nor is Lin's guest and instructs him to accompany them as well, in case something happens. Meanwhile, Rain and the king discuss how Darius has shown disregard for their non-aggression treaty. Rain points out that this was clear during their last meeting when Darius demanded rights to the dungeons. Nor and Lin arrive, and Nor realizes that Lin's father is the king. He apologizes for his appearance, explaining that Lin wanted to get there in a hurry, but the king doesn't mind. Nor apologizes in advance if he says anything impolite, but the king tells him not to worry and that it will be easier to talk with him. The king thanks Nor for saving his daughter. Nor thinks that the king's thanks are enough reward for him, but the king insists on offering something more. He asks if Nor would prefer land or money, but Nor refuses both. The king, persistent, then offers him half of the oldest and largest dungeon in the world, which is priceless. The king's son comments that it's too generous, but Nor again states that he doesn't want any of that, claiming the king's thanks are more than enough. Seeing that Nor isn't interested in wealth, the king offers him a sword from his throne. Nor takes the sword and is surprised by its weight. Noticing the king's son's reaction, Nor realizes the sword may be priceless, so he initially refuses it. The king mentions that it's useless to him, as he just picked it up during one of his missions. Nor accepts the sword and gives it a swing, surprising everyone with his power. The king praises him for being able to wield it with one hand and asks if he could to train his daughter. FBI, open up! <laughs>
but Nor mentions that there is nothing he could teach her after leaving. Nor notices that the size of the sword is the same as the drain he cleaned, so he plans to try it out in the morning. He is stopped by Ines, who apologizes for her earlier rude behavior, acknowledging that it was completely uncalled for. Nor assures her that he doesn't mind, understanding that her duty is to protect the Clay family at any cost. She expresses her deep gratitude to Nor for saving Lin's life and promises to assist him if he ever needs help. Not wanting to go back and forth, Nor accepts her offer, saying he'll reach out if needed. However, she warns him never to speak so casually to the king again, as while the king allowed it this time, she won't let such disrespect slide in the future. Nor agrees, and she seems satisfied Ines asks for his name. When he tells her it's Nor, she appears oddly shocked. Nor wonders if he's done something wrong again, but she brushes it off and takes her leave. As Nor is about to leave as well, Gilbert stops him and challenges him to a fight. Gilbert suggests they have a sparring match, and Nor thinks this is a great opportunity to learn from a veteran. He takes a wooden sword and prepares to fight. Nor doesn't know how formidable his opponent will be but promises to do his best against Gilbert and hopes he might win. They begin fighting, and Nor is able to see all of Gilbert's attacks and avoid them. Nor suspects that Gilbert must be holding back, so he tells him to stop and mentions that there's no need for him to hold back. Gilbert wonders if he was holding back unconsciously since Nor is human, but he decides to turn up the intensity. He starts attacking again, and Nor realizes that Gilbert is faster than before. Still, Nor is surprised that Gilbert leaves himself wide open after every attack, so he thinks this might actually be a trap. Gilbert, on the other hand, is frustrated that his attacks are not working. Nor thinks Gilbert might be holding back again, so he tells him to speed up a little since he's okay. Seeing the look on Gilbert's face, Nor wonders if this is all he has, while he has gotten strong due to his training. Gilbert gets angry and uses a skill to attack Nor but is shocked when the attack still doesn't land. Nor accepts defeat even after dodging the attack. After Nor leaves, the onlookers start talking, suggesting that if Gilbert had used a real spear, Nor would already be dead since Gilbert is a genius in fighting. Gilbert reflects on how, from the moment he picked up a spear, he knew he had a talent for it. However, he soon became bored because he had no one who could provide a challenging fight. Upon returning to the royal capital, Gilbert learned that tensions with neighboring countries were worsening. In response, he began hunting demons and, upon hearing that a powerful individual had joined the corps, challenged them to a duel. To his surprise, he was easily defeated. He later discussed the experience with his teacher, remarking that life would be more interesting if there were more people as strong as him. His teacher inquired about Ines, to which Gilbert replied that she was strong in her own way, but he believed he could still beat her in a mock battle. Despite his own strength, Gilbert's teacher emphasized the importance of training soldiers, knowing that no war could be won by a single person, regardless of their power. The teacher mentioned that someone stronger than Gilbert might one day emerge, and Gilbert eagerly anticipated such a challenge. After hearing about Nor, Gilbert wanted to see him for himself. Upon meeting Nor, he initially doubted that Nor was strong enough to have defeated a Minotaur. Yet, during their duel, he couldn't land a single blow on Nor. Even when he attempted to use his strongest attack, one that could kill if it connected, he still failed. In a twist of fate, Nor admitted defeat despite having won the battle. This left Gilbert both humiliated and excited by the prospect that someone of Nor's caliber had finally appeared. Meanwhile, Nor reflects on Gilbert's attack, acknowledging its sheer power. He realizes that if Gilbert hadn't held back his own speed during the battle, there was a real chance he could have been fatally wounded. The fight made him realize that he needs to work harder the next day. He is surprised by how easily he can clean the drain with his sword. He then wonders how he can use the sword to help more people. Suddenly, Lin shows up behind him, apologizing for startling him. Nor wonders what she wants. Lin tells him she would like to be his page. Nor doesn't understand what she means, so she explains that a page is someone who assists with everyday needs and learns on the side. She promises not to annoy him, but Nor refuses. Lin wonders if he is offended by anything that happened at the castle or if he thinks she is too inexperienced. She reassures him that she got the highest marks in all training schools. Nor keeps telling her that there isn't anything he can teach her, but she doesn't give up. She demonstrates her skills by creating ice icicles, burning them with fire, cutting a big tree in half with a knife, and then showing off her plasma sword by destroying a tree. She asks if he will accept her now because of what she has shown, but Nor still refuses. He feels bad for her. He decides to show her his useless skill so she can see for herself that Nor isn't able to teach her anything. As Lin heads home, she recalls how all the instructors at the training schools shared a story about a boy with seemingly no talent. He had attended the three-month training programs at various schools, and everyone doubted someone with such little potential could even exist. She particularly remembers the magic instructor, Oaken, demonstrating his ability to slightly increase the strength of his tiny flame skill, which had always impressed her. However, when Lin saw Nor's flame, she was astonished. It was far larger than Oaken's, even though he is considered the greatest magician in the world. 
Feeling embarrassed for having tried to show off her abilities in front of someone so gifted both physically and mentally, she realized Nor was someone who would never bow to anyone understanding that she will need to lead her kingdom alongside her father and brother, Lin knows her family's legacy of strength is crucial. Determined to learn from Nor, she decides to follow him until he agrees to teach her, believing that the strength her family has sought for generations resides within him. 